Ice cream. Hi. Hey y'all, welcome to the Suburban Stitcher podcast. My name is Diane and today is July 28th, 2017. It is a Friday, Friday afternoon. Um, it's early-ish in the morning. Um, <laughs> honestly, it seems earlier than most mornings that I'm up and going and make up and showered and hair done. And that is because I wanted to be fresh and clean for... <laughs> For you guys, um, which kind of sounds ridiculous, like I'm never fresh and clean any other time. But you know, I put a little lipstick on, did my hair. It's summer, so it seems like that doesn't happen every day. <laughs> so my kids are still sleeping, and I decided to come and record. Um, I can tell it's summer. One, because it's so hot. I mean, just hot all the time. I have the fan on, and I hope that doesn't um, distract. Um, I'm just, it has to happen. It's 8.37 a.m. It's probably already almost 90 degrees, and um, even in the air conditioning, it's just hot all the time. Um, so how are you? Um, I am just loving life, loving summer. It's been another week. We have been to the beach and back, which, oh my gosh, I haven't been to the beach beach in five years, maybe. And I love the beach. Every time I go, I don't mind the sand. I, I just love it all. I love the water. I love the, the noise, the white noise of the water, just the the f soothing, like flowing. I mean, the lake is one thing, but boy, I am a beach girl for sure. Um, and I love hiking and I love the mountains, but give me the beach any day. Um, maybe one day <laughs> I'll live on the beach, but who knows? Um, so anyway, that's what I've been doing this last week. <laughs> we snuck away and it was lovely. Um, and it was apropos because it was Shark Week. <laughs> um, so I trying to think what else is going on. Um, I can't think of anything else. So let's just head straight into announcements. Um, and around your neck, Cal, is going, going, going. We have just a couple of days until the end of the second month of three months of this knit along. If you are new to the podcast, the Around Your Neck Cal is a three month knit along for any knitted or crocheted item that you wear around your neck. Um, I would extend this to weaving as well. If you weave a scarf or a you know, something like that, a stole, a wrap, throw it in there. Sure. Why not? <laughs> um, weaving, crochet, knitting, anything you wear around your neck. Um, and then you count up your yardage. It is actual knit yardage, so you don't get to count held double yardage. But um, yeah, I think that's the only other. A oh, whips count. We have some sponsors. I talked about them last time, but you can go into the Ravelry group for Suburban Stitcher and um, and find about them there and go support their businesses, um, buy some lovely yarns or bags or patterns and just do, do what you do. Do support them, love on them. Um, I... Sorry, I'm just making my notes, updating my show notes here. Um, this cal goes until the end of August. So August 31st, August 30th. I can't remember which is the last day. I think it's the 30th. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. So July and August both have, both have 31 days. Yes. Okay. I think I sing that song every time, right? <laughs> whatever. Um, so go into the Ravelry group, 
join the Ravelry group for the Suburban Stitcher podcast. And you can read all of the rules, participate, whips count, finish up in the next month, anything that you would wear around your neck. And if you finished it all summer, June or July, then you can throw those in there too. You're going to create one post per person. So this is not a every time you finish something, make a new post. This is remember that you are post number 37 in that thread. And every time you finish something, you're going to edit post number 37. Add your picture, re-tally your yardage and your points, and and go from there. So I think that's all the Around Your Neck Cal news. Um, along the lines, sort of adjacent to Suburban Stitcher and Around Your Neck Cal, I do want to say that I have officially published my first pattern on Ravelry. It may be my only pattern. <laughs> but it is my first pattern. Um, I had so, so, so many people at Zombie Knitpocalypse and just here on the podcast message me on Ravelry. So many people wanted to know my um, recipe for this cowl. And um, so I wrote it up in a pattern. My sweet friend Susie White of Prairie Girl Susie, Prairie Girl Designs, um, pattern designer extraordinaire, um, tech edited this for me. And um, it is up on Ravelry for you. It is a free download because I did not reinvent the wheel here, y'all. Like this is, if you're watching this, you probably knit and you can do everything in here. Um, it is knit, purl, cast on, bind off, yarn over, knit two together. Those are the only things you need to know how to do. Um, I am not teaching new things in this pattern. I am not um, teaching techniques or giving you diagrams or anything. This is just a recipe pattern. Um, so, so there's really... Um, I, I hesitate to say there's no pattern support because of course I'm going to help you, but there's, I mean, there's nothing to really support because it's literally just the recipe for how I did this. Um, the great thing about this recipe is if you are using scraps, you can use, you know, whatever scraps you want. You can, you know, make these sections half as much. You could do a double section. You could add some texture. You could do some garter stitch ribbing in here. Um, you can do whatever you want. So um, I just wrote it up officially for those that wanted it. So you have my written out version of exactly how I finished this cowl. So that that is there. Um, it is called the Southern Charm Cowl. <laughs> I guess that would help, right? Southern Charm Cowl. And that is on Ravelry as we speak. Um, the next thing is you are probably, I'm assuming, I don't know of another way, you're either watching me on YouTube or iTunes download. Um, both of those, I would love it if you would, if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button if you want to know every time a new episode pops up. Um, hit the like button. Um, the dislike buttons always crack me up. Um, and I would welcome anyone who hits dislike to tell me why they dislike that. And mostly just because I'm curious, like, what is it that you disliked? Um, was it, is it that I have an ad at the beginning? Um, I had a lot of comments the last time about the sound. Um, so let me know what you dislike, what I can try to make a little bit better. Um, you know, I, I do this all on my own. Um, I don't have anyone editing for me or um, there's certainly not professional equipment. Um, I have desk lamps and natural light and a laptop. And if it can't be done with that, then it doesn't happen. So, um, and that's just, you know, that's just reality. Some people have better cameras, some people have big microphones, and that's just not me at this point. Um, even four years in now, that's just still not me. So, um, but that being said, if you dislike something that I'm doing, I would love to know so that maybe, maybe I can not do it or whatever. So, um, 
Also, if you do like me, I would love it if you would subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Um, give me a star rating on iTunes because that is how other people find this podcast. And um, I would love that feedback as well. So, um, and the last thing is an announcement about an upcoming knit along. And it's still about a month away, but I wanted to start announcing it because I want you to start thinking about it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and announce it officially here. And she is probably going to be like, ah, because <laughs> it's been a little brainchild for a little while. Um, but I'm making it official. Um, so coming up in September, and I'm not sure if it's going to be two months or three months or how long, or maybe four months, I don't know. But starting for sure, September 1st, I will be hosting a breathing space knit along. And breathing space, um, I'm assuming that somewhere here I'm going to put a picture. Um, but breathing space is a sweater um, that is designed by Vera Valamaki. And it is a gorgeous two color striped kind of biased sweater that every single person I've ever seen wear it, it looks amazing on them. Um, and I have seen all body sizes. I have seen, you know, 30 inch busts to 50 plus inch busts. And it looks amazing on every single person that I've ever seen wear it. And because of that, and because it's a great way to use, you know, two different colors that you love, um, you know, just playing with color, playing with um, the biasing of that fabric. And also because I have just literally wanted to knit this since it came out, um, I decided that it needed to be a knit along. So be thinking about breathing space knit along and Amber Yarn Hoarder and I will be hosting this um, knit along. I don't know that there's going to be prizes. It will probably just be for fun and for encouragement and all of that. So um, I also want to say that if you have colors in my shop that you want to knit or are looking for or dreaming about for a breathing space, contact me and I can put together a kit for you. Um, I may throw together some color combinations and some different things up in the next couple of weeks as some options for that knit along um, and then have those kind of ready mid-August so that they would be able to ship to you in plenty of time to start for September 1st. Um, so you have about a month to plan. I know for my size, I think I talked about last time, I generally just kind of consider myself a 40 inch bust um, and between 38 and 40. And um, I will need three skeins of the main color and two skeins of the contrast color. And that is to say, I need probably, I'm going to need like two and a little and one and a little. Um, but technically, I will need three and two just to make sure that I have enough yardage um, for that. So if that, if that helps you, gives you an idea of the yarn requirements, you can start looking with your stash and, and seeing what you might need to fill, it, fill in with it. Um, so that is it for announcements. It's kind of a lot. Um, finished objects. I do have one finished object this week. And let's see if I can get it without making a huge mess. Um, I finished my longest standing whip, or sock whip, who not the longest standing whip. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, so this is my vintage holiday sock blank socks. Um, it is a sparkly sock blank. I don't, yeah, you can see the sparkle in there. Um, but this color kind of back here shows it the best. Um, <laughs> um, so these are done. This was dyed up by um, Lone Star Arts. Lone Star Arts. Um, she has a Texas dyer and she's participated by dyeing up, you know, yarn for our rainbow along and different things in the years past. Um, I just, I love her dyeing and her color sense. And um, this was called Vintage Holiday Party. So 
that's the info on that. And this is what the blank look like. So I, I actually knit a pretty tall sock for me. I'm really excited about that too. Um, so that's what the blank generally looked like, just a big splatter mess. And that's how the socks turn out. So I think that's a good kind of idea. If you still have not knit with sock blanks and you're wondering what might I get with a big splatter-tastic mess, this is what you might get. So um, these are about 85 grams. So I'm assuming, I haven't weighed it to be sure, but I'm assuming this is about 15 grams, um, which is actually the perfect amount for my barn raising squares. Right? I haven't heard about that in a while. Um, but I would love to... I really need to get back to any of my blankets at this point. Um, I've been so like production knitting focused that um, some of my scrap projects have kind of gone by the wayside, but I would love to get back to them this fall. So, so yeah, so this may go in the burn raising square pile because it's kind of just the perfect amount for that blanket and then it would be done. So that is my one and only finished object this week. Um, these are not blocked, so they're still kind of wavy. Um, but it, the one thing I did notice, and I and it's a lovely thing, um, you know, I think just as you get, whether it's getting older or whether it's getting, um, having more knitting years underneath your belt, I feel like, generally speaking, your gauge tends to loosen up. Um, and I guess that's just from just from knitting often and maybe it's because you don't um, feel the need like you're you don't feel like every stitch is gonna fall off and so you don't grip it as hard or your tension isn't as tight or maybe it has to do with arthritis and you know Hannah whatever it is I feel like I feel fairly confident making that statement that generally speaking your gauge loosens as you become as you knit more as you knit more years, I guess. Um, but because of the sock blank crinkliness, I feel like I was more conscious in my tension. And these socks um, are a little bit denser, which I love. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about that because, again, like I said, you know, my gauge is definitely loosened as I have knit longer, um, gotten older, and to have it cinch back up a little bit on some of the, especially some socks, is is pretty exciting. So, so that is my finished object. Um, oh my gosh, there's just no room to put all this stuff. There's stuff everywhere. Um, whips. I... I think I'm pretty sure I said something last week to the effect of I am having so much fun working on all of my existing projects that I just can't even imagine casting on anything new. I think within 48 hours of saying that I started three projects um, and that's probably not an exaggeration. Um, so the first thing that I started is the Love You Baby shawl. This shawl, oh my gosh, I'm kind of obsessed with it. Um, this shawl was designed by Suzanne Summer for Do You Knit. And I need to put something behind that so you can't read it. Read through the paper. Okay, so that's the shawl. It's a big, huge brioche shawl. Um, very graphic, very, very cool. Um, trying to find a picture of the whole thing. Okay. So there you go. So that's kind of where you can see the whole shawl better. Um, it's a three color shawl, lots of brioche. And I have not knit a ton of brioche to completion, but I am constantly obsessed with brioche. 
And when I say obsessed, I mean like I want to knit it. I love the way it looks. I just, I want all of the brioche. So um, I, this shawl wasn't even available on Ravelry to the public for a little while because it was just at Do You Knit. And then, um, so I called them up and had them help me shop <laughs> for some hedgehog skinny singles. And I, I am in love. I, like I said, I saw this pattern when it came out on Ravelry and it was just available through the shop. And I just kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And then I finally was like, you know, Diane, really, it's not that often that you are like for weeks, think about a shawl, one specific shawl. Like I've, I want to start it. I want to start it. I want to start it. You know, things come across my radar and I like, Oh, favorite, you know, or you like them. And then a couple days later, you've forgotten about it and moved on to the next thing that you like that day. And this one just kept coming back to my brain. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, So I took that as my cue to start it. And I called them, like I said, the sweet ladies at Do You Knit. I don't know who I talked to on the phone, but she was sending me text message pictures of the yarn so that I could see a lineup of, you know, what kind of colors I wanted, um, which was so amazing. And she was so funny. Like the thing that cracked me up the most, she's like, I'm going to send you this on my phone, but don't text me in the middle of the night. Like my husband will kill me. Like, you can't just start texting me. And I'm like, I promise I won't. <laughs> I'm not a total creep. Um, but it just cracked me up. She was like making sure that now that I had her number that I wasn't going to start being weird. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, I have started the shawl. Um, and you can see here. I feel like this is a ton of hours of knitting for not a lot of things. <laughs> I did ha I did start it and have to restart it once because I messed up. Um, but so I'm using Hedgehog Skinny Singles in two different colors. I'm using Seed, which is a natural with just every once in a while some speckles. I told it way back here out of the glare. That's pretty color accurate right there and it gives you an idea of how sparse the speckles are, which I love um, because I kind of just wanted a blank canvas for that. And then I'm using Fly, right? Yeah, Fly, which is almost a neon minty spearmint green, blue, more green with lots of neon speckles. super fun. So these two are creating this so far. The fly is in, is going to be on the front, is the, is in the foreground and the seed is, you're seeing through to the white. Um, so that is like the back where the white is in the foreground, but this is, so this is the fly in the front. I just love it. Absolutely love it. My third color, and I actually bought four colors from them because I wasn't sure. I was going back and forth between Bubble and Fly for the main color, but I ended up with Fly because I wanted it to be a softer, um, kind of softer background for the brioche, and then um, the my third color that is sort of on the bottom that will be my my pop of color is not too too poppy. <laughs> it is coral. Um, right there. So that is very color accurate right there, I would say. So I think that all three of these together will look beautiful. Um, the bottom brioche section will be in these two. I, I just love, 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 love. Um, I love the whole thing. So, and I ended up with a, an extra skein of Hedgehog in the, in the process. I mean, I bought, I bought it, but an unassigned skein because I just couldn't tell from the pictures. Um, but I'm glad I went with the minty or green one. 
that's gonna look so cool when it's all done. And that is Love You Baby by Suzanne Summer. Um, I have been working on my Oak Clark socks, which is technically my July socks for the Desert Vista Dye Works Knit Along. And I'm, mm, I am pretty sure that I'm not going to finish them this month, which is okay. I have earned a free skein of yarn through, um, through knitting for six months. And I earned a 30% off to get a 30% off skein, which is hugely generous. And I have so much Desert Vista Dye Works. Like that cube right there is all Desert Vista. I have so much. And I just have so many other things that I want to knit right now. So yet again, second year in a row, I'm going to be a fail for this knit along. But it's okay. So anyway, I finished the first sock, all of that to say. I finished the first sock tube while I was at the beach. Um, and then I started the second one, but I just have gotten on to other things. And those, these may end up being for a kiddo. They might. These are good boy socks. They might be for a kiddo. Maybe for Christmas. Um... So those are the Oak Clark Desert Vista Dye Work socks. Um, speaking of kid socks, I did start um, in my Mrs. Brown's bags. That was a gift, and it has been to the beach and sat in the sand and gotten wet and is still, like, just as beautiful as the day that I got it. It's amazing. Um, I started because Shark Week. I pulled out a very vintage skein um, that Jack, my youngest, has been eyeballing for a while for some socks for himself. Um, and I cast on a vintage skein of Kirby Warby Yarns, um, who is dying yarn again. And I like, literally could not be more excited about that. Like I'm just over the moon excited. Um, that she is dying yarn again. So this is how this is knitting up. I love the wide stripes. Oh my gosh, love them so much. Um, I have my little Shark Week stitch marker that is a Sucra Sucra Miniatures stitch marker, but I actually got it from Primrose Yarn Company. That's kind of some of Hello Lovely's preview right here. Um, she had some the Shark Week kit, <laughs> and um, I had forgotten that I ordered it, and then it came in last week, and I was so excited, um, and I would be lying if I said that I didn't order it just for the stitch marker. So it was a really expensive stitch marker, but I also got some yarn, um, but uh, yeah, I totally ordered it for the stitch marker. So that is coming along, and that is going to be a pair of socks for Jack, my youngest, um, I, in my process of finishing up things this summer and doing what I can do to, to, to finish up projects, I finished up that pair of socks that was the vintage holiday party. And I also, I talked about it again last time, like I just really have so many Christmas socks on the needles and I thought I need to get some of those off the needles. Well, one is this pair, little shorty pair of Holly Jolly socks. Um, this is the first ever yarn colorway that I created last year when I started dyeing yarn. Um, and it's so fun to look at it right now. But yep, so this is Holly Jolly. I made little shorty socks and I cast on for the second one. Um, what I did determine after I cast this on is that apparently I knit these toe up and the second one is going to be cuffed down. Oh well. But I've just barely started it. So I've completed the cuff and I'm kind of going on to the fish lips kiss heel. Um, so these are going to be probably, who knows if they'll fit different. That'll sort of be an interesting experiment to see actually, now that I think about it, to see if they fit differently because of the toe up versus the top down construction. 
but um, I am, I would really, I would love to finish those up pretty soon. I, I will say I'm not like, they live in this little bowl that sits on my craft table, my project table here in the craft room. And I just sort of knit a few rows if I'm standing here. So nothing is happening very fast. Obviously they've been sitting like that for months and nothing has happened very fast, but, but eventually they will get done if I keep looking at them and knitting a couple of rows here and there. So I probably won't show those again until they're done, but I just felt like I'd started the second sock and wanted to show you. Um, the last work in progress that I just started day before yesterday um, is a project that I have been scheming about since May. Um, and it is this sweater out of the First Lane magazine. And it's this cover sweater. It's called Nuke, I believe, in U U K. It's the Nuke sweater. Um, it is a short sleeve sweater. It's basically short sleeve raglan top down sweater. Um, I obviously live in Texas. Um, I love, as most people do, like that bohemian, very layered look is huge right now. That is definitely my style, like linen. I'm wearing a linen dress right now, um, but like just linen layers that are cool and breathable and um, plant fibers is totally the way to go. Um, I, for years and years and years, have sort of like fundamentally been against knitting with cotton and linen just because I live in Texas because I feel like it's almost been like a crusade. Like just because I live here doesn't mean I only ever want to knit with linen. Therefore, I'm never going to knit with linen or cotton which is sort of ridiculous. Um, also, as I have grown up and become more confident in my knitting and, and really, quite honestly, I, you know, I have a huge drawer of socks. I have probably 70 pairs of socks. Um, I have dozens of shawls and cowls and, and things. And that is not to say that I will not, that I'm going to stop knitting them. I will never stop knitting them, but I do have this sort of renewed desire or new desire because it's not renewed. It never existed before. Um, a new desire to have garments, knitted garments in my wardrobe. And so this idea for this sweater was born. Um, I love this, but there is no way in the world that a short sleeve sweater in Texas is ever practical because the weather when you would wear short sleeves is hot. And yes, I could wear it like this with a long sleeve and whatever under it, but you know, and I may make another one if I love this and do that. But I thought for the first one that something that in, in the summertime, if it was a cool restaurant, it was like, yeah, I, I want to wear this tank around the house and whatever, this tank dress. But if I'm going, you know, out, if we're going to a restaurant or going to a movie or whatever, then I can put on a layer over it that would still be cool and short sleeve, but provide some coverage and give me that like cute bohemian layered look. So all of that to say the idea, that's how this idea for this project was born. Um, I do, again, another Hello Lovelies preview. This is in a Love Sock wool bag that I literally got in the mail two days ago, opened it up, and put this project in. Like, started it, put it in there. Um, this is a Heather Ross. I think this is Sleeping Porch. It's the line of fabric, which I didn't get any of, and I just love. I love the mustard with the red zipper and the ticking lining. Like, oh my gosh. Every single piece of this I'm in love with. And so thank you, Sarah. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and that's color, super color accurate right there. Um, so I am knitting this Nuke cardigan out of Knit Picks Cotlin, which is a in black. Um, it is a cotton, 70% cotton. 
cotton, 30% linen, and it has this whatever kind of cotton that it is, and I can't pronounce the word. T-A-N-G-U-I-S. Tanguis. 70% cotton, 30% linen, DK weight, 123 yards for 50 grams. Um, and I'm knitting it in black because that is a color that I will wear. Um, again, because this was definitely like a, I'm knitting this for this purpose in my wardrobe that already exists. It needed to be a color that I would wear. And so that meant black. Um, and I am so addicted to knitting this sweater right now because it is flying. Um, first, I have to say there's dog hair all over it because black and it's going to show up more and it's summer and my dog is extra shedding and that's just reality. Um, I have never knit an in the round sweater before and holy cow, this is why people do this because it is going so quickly. You can't see it, but... But this is what I have so far. <laughs> oh, that actually you can see a little bit. Okay, so you can see right there, there is, it is a breathable fabric, which I love. Um, the pattern actually calls for worsted weight. I'm knitting out of a DK weight um, because that's what the cotton linen is. I am not making any extra adjustments. I did not gauge swatch for this. I picked a size that was about five to six inches larger than my bust. I think I'm knitting the 45 or the 46 inch size, which is the large for this sweater. Um, if it's a little bit, it's with five or six inches of ease, I figure it's going to be loose enough anyway where an extra minus a couple of inches or plus a few inches isn't going to matter anyway. Um, therefore, I didn't gauge swatch. So um, I am almost to the point where I split for the sleeves. I think I'm maybe four rounds away from that. Um, the yarn is so soft. I, I was really worried about knitting with a cotton linen blend and it being too rough on my hands. And it's amazing. Absolutely loving it. Um, the stitches are beautiful. It is not hard on my hands. I love everything about this so much. Um, this is on a 32 inch needle from the China. I remember like three, four years ago, three years ago, when all of podcast land was ordering up the sets of like 30 needles for $2 from China. <laughs> and that seems like an exaggeration and it's maybe only slightly one. Um, yeah, so that is, that is it. I mean, it's just, it's great. It's a size eight needles, 32 inches metal needles, because I figured I needed as much speed as possible. No wood needles for cotton linen. It would be sticky and slow enough. Um, but it is just going, oh my gosh, it's going so well. I'm so excited. Um, today I will keep working on this. I will split for the sleeves. Then it will be going even faster because I'll lose about a hundred stitches and I'm just going to be go, go, going. I don't know how long I'm going to make this. I don't know how long the sleeves I'm going to make. Um, I may get it, you know, a good several inches past the sleeves and then go back and actually knit the sleeves um, just so that I can get an idea for how long I want to make the sweater. Um, I, I just feel like that's probably something that I will do. Um, in that same vein, I will probably, um, it has you picking up the stitches and knitting the neckband, the ribbing at the neckband last. I will probably not do that last. I think the last decision that I will make is how long to knit it. Um, I have eight skeins of this cotton linen yarn total. And this is the second skein, which is probably about halfway done. So less than two days of knitting and I'm almost done with a hundred grams. Like it's just flying and it's really, it's going to be so lightweight and breathable. I'm so excited. I cannot say enough lovely things about this project. 
So that is it for works in progress. Um, I have several Hello Lovelies to talk about, some of which we've kind of already talked about. Um, so the, head, the hedgehog fibers, you saw that I had gotten the hedgehog fibers and I have this little extra, um, extra. <laughs> I have the Love Sock wool bag that came in, the Primrose kit, which was like, I think I ordered it a month ago and it, this was the yarn that came in. Um, she did kits on her Luscious Sock, which is a 80-20 merino, excuse me, merino nylon, and it's a pretty thick merino nylon. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. Um, and then she also offered it on her MCN base, and the MCN was more blues. Kind of disappointed I didn't get the blues. But, I mean, it was a surprise. You had no idea what the yarn was going to look like. Um, but the blues are prettier, I think. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a bummer. But, I mean, that's not a fault of the dyer. That's just my preference. So, if you have ideas for what to make with these, I have no idea. No clue. This one's pretty, with the purple. So I got that. Um, let's see, what else did I get? I ordered this from Amazon because it was super cheap, and I was watching, is it Christy Glass? And I, like, just discovered her, which, hilarious, so fun. Um, and she was talking about this little book, and it was super fun and really inexpensive on Amazon. So I ordered it. Drop Dead Easy Knits. And I haven't really looked at it too much, but it looks super fun. Cute. Cute patterns. Um, I remember thinking I wanted it for this specifically, this like chunky weight wrap. And then I think that hat and that hat, those were two of the ones that I was drawn to on her interview. Oh, and this, for sure. I remember this little cowl. Um, I think this is a Kirsten Kapoor cowl. Lucy and Ethel. Yeah. Um, no, it doesn't really show it right there, but you can get the idea. It's two different, two different textures right there. So anyway... Um, I got that. I had some Sucra Sucra miniature charms come in. Um, so I had some new things there. A cupcake with a succulent on it. A cookie with some succulents. A donut chocolate milkshake. And a peach bellini cocktail. And then she sent along a Astral Apothic sample. This Astral Apothic is her... Um, kind of second brand with body whips and lotions and scrubs. And I think this is a scrub sample is what I'm assuming. Um, I'm almost positive. It's super fun. Um, inspired and totally enabled by Sarah Love Sock Wool. I saw her picture on Instagram of these Regia Pear Perfect socks that she's knitting and promptly went to eBay and bought a pair. Bought some because I stinking love these. Like how fun is that bright, crazy colors for Halloween? I love that. Um, I think that's it. Oh no, I got one more skein of yarn. I bought this because I wanted to test out the base as a maybe for the shop. And what better way to test it out than to buy a skein of yarn from one of your favorite dyers. <laughs> um, this is a 100% superwash merino four ply. Um, I wanted to test it out because it's a super round four ply that has no nylon in it, um, which would be great for shawls. That for those people, I love single ply. I could knit all the single ply shawls forever infinity. But I know not everyone is like me. So I am trying to find a fingering weight that is a plied merino only option with no nylon. Um, I'm not a big cashmere fan. 
you know, shocker, ah, sacrilege. I mean, I love cashmere. Who doesn't like cashmere? But I don't, I don't know. I'm just not looking for like a MCM. So that has nylon in it. That's the N and I don't want nylon. Um, I really am a pretty big believer in, especially since I do a lot of lace knitting, um, keeping nylon out of lace shawls because they don't block right. They don't hold their block. Nylon has spring and bounces back. The more plies that you have bounces back. And um, especially these tightly plied things like this. This is great for a shawl that's like garter or something else, but I would not knit a super intricate lace shawl out of this yarn. I would out of single ply yarn, but I would not knit this. So I'm trying to have kind of in between 75, 25 sock and single ply merino. Um, because again, some people want something in the middle. So anyway, this is Spun Right Round, classic sock in the House of Dolls colorway, which kind of looks amazing. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to pair it with a black, my cold colorway, to knit something. Right? So anyway. Um, that is it for Hello Lovelies, and I believe that also does it for the podcast portion. I do have a small shop update portion. Um, I wanted to specifically highlight this week. Um, there's Thank you all so much for buying so much yarn. Oh my gosh, my little shelves are getting empty, which is great. So this is all my single ply lace and different things. This is glitter sock and that's regular sock and those cubes are getting empty. I need to fill them back up again. And this is DK. Um, several sweater lots went out this week. Yay! Please show me your sweaters when you're done with them. Um, but the thing I want to highlight this week is my August kit. So it is the back to school kit. And I normally don't show them, but I ordered so much of this fabric, you guys, that I'm I'm honestly even considering doing a coupon code for it. And I would go back and refund some people some money if you've already purchased the kit. But like, I really just love this so much, and I ordered so much fabric. And I, like I said, I'm thinking of ordering a coupon code so that it is more enticing to you. <laughs> but I just love this. The bags are um, with pencils, the gray background, so it's Grello, all things Grello, of course. And the little pencils say, enjoy, draw, create, um, sketch, all sorts of different little creative words. Um, you can see the lined, kind of lined paper background, and then the pencils going this way. The inside is eraser pink lining. I just thought that was so cute. So I have bags. And this is an a la carte create your own kit. Um, I have changed the way I've done the listing a little bit and hopefully it's a little clearer. I had um, some questions last um, month about they ordered one thing and they thought it was a kit but they only got the yarn or only got the bag and it is a la carte so it's no kit unless you buy more than one thing. Um, you pick your yarn base out of sock or glitter sock. I added a mini skein option this time. Um, so yeah, um, I this is a test die for this, but I'm pretty sure this is pretty close. The yellow might tweak a little bit, but this is the general idea of what the yarn is going to look like. So it's Grello with speckles of black, kind of charcoal gray for the um, lead in the pencil. And then some darker orangey yellow speckles for darker pencils. Um, I just, I think it's super fun. Speckletastic, this is Glitter Sock, which is a gold Stellina. And this is it on regular sock. 
the speckles on this one are amazing. <laughs> So that is the August kit. And like I said, I'm pretty sure um, I will probably have decided by the time you're watching this and maybe you've seen a coupon co code go across or you've checked the show notes, um, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to offer a coupon code for anyone who wants to purchase the August kit because, because I want to and because I have a lot of this fabric. <laughs> so um, anyway. That is it for the show this week, guys. Thank y'all so much for, um, I need the color to shift back. It's like <laughs> freaking out. Um, anyway, thank y'all as always so much for watching. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as DBB Stitch and you can find me on Instagram as Suburban Stitcher. Um, my Show notes are on SuburbanStitcher.com, and there is a Ravelry group for this podcast, Suburban Stitcher Podcast. Um, go join, be a member, participate in our knit-alongs, and have an all-around good time. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching, and have a great week. A <laughs> have a great week. Bye, y'all. Hello, hello.